If for Nanya, I'm pissed that we lost against Asna. Did you see Cass play man onside? When he knows that he should have run faster. Start to the end season, the disaster. And I know it won't heal these wings, but a win against Arsenal would have been a plaster. Just by knowing that the season's over. But a job means and a little bit of laughter. I might just help recover man faster. And I know they're gonna call me a hater. You ain't the one that's got 20 Arsenal fans on your WhatsApp with a screensaver. Saying they're winning this league in October. I'm from the era of Fergie and Arsenal. When go Arsenal can wait a bit longer. Yo, this is the OT99 Bantering, where opinions are shared and smoke gets served. Look, we're back again with another show. And today you will notice something a bit different. We're back with a full cast. Why? Because Asna. Asna versus Manchester United need... Oh, get out of there, man. What is that? You know what time there. it is. I need you to redo this what, again. You know what time it is. I brought a clock, is. you know. What anyway, anyway, look. Obviously, Arsenal got the W against Manchester United and we're here to chop it up. So, look, we brought the full cast because I needed everyone's opinions on this one, man. I can't suffer in silence and I can't suffer alone. So, guys, man, welcome. How you been, man? Ed Weezy, start with you, man. How you been? It's been all right, man. It's been a minute. You know, yeah? Uh, it's yeah, been a man. while. As I said to you, what did I say to you on the phone? Did, like, I think, like... Our, our player of the season is you for consistently coming here week after week. <laughs> Writing bars and spitting bars. <laughs> so I want to shout out you. Yo, I'm not even serious, bro. No, no, God, is, God. Honestly, because when did that disappear? I, I couldn't take it, but I did something. <laughs> <laughs> I could I did something because I didn't want to be clear from here, but every day coming up here just like screaming. It's been a long season, man, but I love I, I would say I'm happy because the season is coming to an end, man. I'm mm. happy, my bro. We're here to celebrate the season coming to an end. That's what we're here <laughs> to do, man. Facts. And hopefully, hopefully, in two weeks' time, that, that other guy there is going to be crying about why they couldn't win the league. Please, bro. Please, bro. <laughs> Please, bro. Ugo, yeah, yeah. I know you're on top of the world, man. Tell me how you're feeling, man, before we get into here, this thing. Here we are a year later. We're in the about the same position. Um... You know, we're, we're dealing with the ghost of, of a season's past. We obviously don't want to repeat that type of run-in. And to be honest, to our credit, we haven't. I feel like our run-in this year has featured tougher opponents, tougher environments. We've had to go away for, I think, what is it, four out of our, our last five matches. We've managed to keep sheets in all of those. And so I, I it's a different team. It's a different mentality. A lot more maturity. You know, we, we emphasize that it was young last year. These people didn't they didn't have that mental endurance to kind of see the season out, get through all 38. But man, I, I it's, it's, been, in, it's then, yeah. been a ride. Arteta in for now. But but okay, <laughs> let me let me ask you though, because you, you, you talk about it's a different mentality now to about I, I feel like if you fail to win it, mm. it will all go back to the game against Villa, which was a very a very a very important game too. It, it was a home game too, and they should have won that. Yeah. So to me, because they would have had the title, like they could have like decided their own fate. Yeah. But no, that true. game ultimately kind of like gave City the upper. Because now you're having to sit here, mm -hmm. having to rely on your rival. To Everyone supporting favor, Tottenham. Mm -hmm. come, come Wednesday. So, mm -hmm. so again, I don't know. Do you think like you learned your lesson from last season though, if you end up not winning it? Or it's going to be like repeating back itself again? No, because um, like you said, that Villa game was it, that was frustrating. That was a frustrating end to 2023. Uh, a lot of fans will tell you that Arteta was just getting too experimental. You know, I think our lineup, we came out, we, of course, were dealing with the knocked up Gabriel. Timber wasn't an option as well. So we had to start Ben White, Tommy Yasu, and Zinchenko at the same time so we just didn't have our usual height on the defensive line and stuff like that but mm. you know you can look back to the villa game as well but then honestly and truly if you want to if you want to become the champions you have to beat the champions so while i wasn't off put by the draw away at city if we would have beat city at that match as well that would be the villa game would have been a moot point so I do think it's a different team. Like Arteta said in the recent post-match interview, this is the most wins in a season in the history of the club. So it's not like we did. It's not like we did wrong. We're just, you know, we're up against the do, monster. Do you, do you, do you want to know who I said that to? 
Who? That's what Klopp said when he couldn't win the league with 97 points. But Back. think about it, 97 Bro. points. I Nine, how, yeah. how many? How many of out? How many of Ferguson's teams have put up 97 points? We know, we're not here to talk about that. You know what it is, yeah. <laughs> when you've got greater competition, yeah, it will elevate mm. everyone around you. I think just the competition at that point wasn't as good because everyone now is getting better in it, so you're gonna be yeah. getting more points. But what I would say though, Arsenal's still dead though. I have to keep it hundred. You know why I say they're dead? Why is that? Because every Arsenal fan thought they were coming in that game to spank Man United and get like four or five nil. And every single Arsenal fan was holding their breath, nervous. I was listening to that guy, Robbie, yeah, give his, his his take on this thing. He was like, when the referee put up six minutes, he was shitting himself. And I'm just like, of but, course. But, but why? What do you mean, but why? You Everybody we, knows. We had Johnny Evans and Casemiro centre-back. Why are you scared? Look at our history at Old Trafford. When was the last time we, we beat Manu away? I think it was like 2006. You know, I was still I was still going to still going to uh, uh, JS1 with my lunchbox. <laughs> me, it was me and my dad watching the game at that point early in the morning. We haven't. It's been a fortress for you guys. But it's Man a new United. Arsenal, and this but is no, our worst season. But you it's know, a new Arsenal. regardless of when it comes to these big six games, regardless of the type of season that each team is having irrespective when it comes down to these rivalry games anything can happen on the road you know that's why and, and, and also too what you also need to look about like right now they, they are they are on the business end of the season it's not about how many goals it's about it's, it's about like three points for them and mm -hmm. it's not about how they do it it's about mm -hmm. collecting the points so I, I i think it was one of those ones where it's true i think i, think I just wanted a professional job done Mm. Yeah. It wasn't about okay, let's go there and kill them all. They didn't come there twenty ten. They came there to get a three points. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's what they did, man. That's exactly what they yeah, did. And that's, that's we, 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 we've done that in the past. I don't know if we still remember back in the day when we used to challenge for a title, but that's what it used to be like. You know, where you go and you grind it. But it's been a long time now. We don't even know how it feels no more, man. <laughs> you know, I'm stressed because that would have been the hat. It's come to this. I know it's sad. It's shameless. But it's come to this where I'm just like, do you know what? In my gen, it was all about Arsene Wenger and Sir Alex Ferguson. That is the era I'm from. So when I hear people saying, oh, I would want Arsenal, I'd rather Arsenal win the league. It just don't quite, it just don't sit right with me. Because look, I'm the person that's got 20 plus 30 Arsenal fans on my blower right now, yeah. Waiting to smoke me, yeah, from now to God knows how long, yeah. I ain't got 20 Man City fans or 20 Liverpool fans like that. So it's just, it just, it's just a, it's difficult to process why I get it, but it's just difficult to process for me to be able to, to be saying, oh yeah, I, I don't mind Arsenal going and on to win it. So let's, 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 let's be honest. Arsenal fans are annoying. They, they're oh. one of the most, they're one of the most annoying, deluded fans <laughs> in the world. Now, I don't want to hear for the next 10 years how this Arsenal team is one of the best in the world because they won a Premiership title. Oh, uh, that's what will happen. I'm telling you. You, you know what I'm trying to say? You got, you got because, to get ready because for it. Because we, 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 we've won a title with like Cleverly, Cleverly and, and Gibson and stuff. We didn't talk about it like that, but they will make it look like... Do you do you want to literally sit here all summer for them telling you like Odegaard deserved their, like, their, their, their Ballon d'Or because uh. he helped them win the league, bro? Or uh. Saka. Saka. <laughs> no, they're going to say Saka. They're going to tell us to give the Ballon d'Or to Saka, bro. That's what, that's what we're going to have to deal with. But I speak I'm, to I one fan, to Arsenal fan. No, I ain't saying his name. He knows who he is. He'll be telling me how Vinicius Jr. is not on the level of Saka. That Vinicius Jr. Exactly. came to the Premier League, yeah. He ain't touching Saka. And this is just what I mean. This is what gets me. This is what just blows my mind, bro. And every Arsenal fan will be like that about their guys. Like right now, Every single Arsenal player is on, is on the level of the uh, of, of the Galacticos. Of they Robert were, Jordan. they were, they for, you know, for a club that their manager hasn't won the league title before. These people were talking about doing the double. Mm. They were talking about doing the Champions League and the Premiership double. And until <laughs> until until Kane got a, a very badly deserved free kick, and they didn't. Here give we Saka, go. And, oh, and they didn't give Saka his pen. It was looking like we would at least go into the semis. Now, if we went into the semis against Real Madrid, I'll be honest, I don't think oh, we you, you you haven't even beaten I, I don't the think. best team in England yet. And you're here talking about doing that. Do you what see you what we have to deal with? We, we, anyway, beat, we beat City at home. Oh, 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 all I'm saying is, why now you guys on top? Now, our first preseason game is against uh, uh, Arsenal in LA. I'm going to be there. Now, Jeez. You you lost you lost better before champions there. 
Because if you know, don't call champion. I'll tell you what, you're going to hear a guy screaming in his African accent, and that'll be me. <laughs> Literally calling up your manager and calling you out too. From don't the worry. Team screen. Don't worry. You know, be champion though. Post, how, post, how post you pro. Do you, okay. How are you? What's your what's your name like? What's your confidence level like? Is it 50, 50, 80 percent? Do you feel like in in two weeks time you know to be called champion? So or is it is, it, is the city finishing next week? Is it next weekend we finish the season? The city plays two more games though, because City's got a game. City's, City's got no, City's got a game midweek. Midweek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they so play, they play next, Tottenham. next weekend next is done. Week is West Ham. They play West so Ham. So do you feel like a, 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 a week today? We will have to like zoom call you and congratulate you for winning uh, the title. What, 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 what was it like? This is what gets on my nerves, yeah, because none of these Arsenal fans they talk the most, but they can't say it with chest. They can't I'm, say it with I, chest. I am ninety five percent sure we will do our job. Everton will be another win. <laughs> we'll get our eighty nine points. Now, depending on. My only, the only saving grace is they're playing at White Hart or they're playing at Tottenham's new stadium. But do I think Tottenham can get a result? I feel like Tottenham can get a draw off them. But the thing people are not realizing is I was talking to a few of my City fans and this was three weeks ago. I think right after they thrashed, it must, it might've been Newcastle, it might've been Burnley, but they thrashed them 4-0. And I told them now from this point on, if you want to make some money, go to your bookie city to score at least three goals for the rest of the way is it's it's a it's a foregone uh foreclosure because now the goal difference battle is we have 60 or plus 61 cities plus 58 with two in hand so even if they do get that draw against tottenham if they go on to annihilate west ham and we eke out a one nil win against everton they might still win on goal difference and that is what has me apprehensive about this run into the end of the season it's truly mm -hmm. going to come down to the very last minute and i i, I don't I'm, think I, i'm gonna be honest though mm -hmm. i would love it and this is kevin kiva said i would love it if Arsenal lose the league on goal difference on goal difference I, oh I, I, I will, <laughs> that's I will the biggest pain it is you'll, the biggest pain you'll, you'll, exactly you'll lose you won't be able to call me again until we're back in the same position <laughs> next year Edwin, that, let me that, ask you a question quickly, though. Edwin. <laughs> How you watched that game in it, though, or at least bits of it, if you if you didn't catch it all of it. How far do you think? Because people say that Man United's light years away, innit? People say Man United's years away, and and you know we ain't you know in contention of winning this title, whatever, or challenging. And that's elements of truth in it. But when I watched that game against Arsenal with this depleted squad, is that just like? And, and what I noticed is that Eric Ten Hag made a tactical decision there to play Amrabat of Manu, and that seemed to just give us a bit more structure. I don't know if that had anything to do with the conceded only one goal where Arsenal, you know, they average three goals a game. What is your views on us being like, how far do you think we are from like, oh. like at least challenging, but putting up a fight oh, or oh, something? You know what it is? You know what it is? Man United have this tendency to win the games that they shouldn't. And that's been evident in the last season or two, right? Mm. So I think naturally we all thought, okay, Arsenal are going to batter Man United, right? Mm. Came out as a 1 0. And mm. at points, it looked like Man United could have got something out of the game, yeah? Mm. But I think if you look at the bigger picture, the problem is not, okay, this is the one game, it's our consistency throughout the whole season. If you look at all the teams that are doing well, they have a style of football. Arsenal have got a way of playing, Man City, Liverpool, whether they've done well, Aston Villa, if they're in the top four. Mm. They've all got a style of, we don't have a style like Ten Hagers send his style that he likes to play, he can't do it with the team. So even though we lost this game and there's only one nil, the problem is is why we're so far away is because there's no consistency in our mm, team. You get what I'm saying? Mm, so mm. whether that one result I don't think is reflective on how like us as a team, but it does show like I think the whole season, as you can see, shows that we're far away because we there's no consistency in the way we play and just with the team that we play week in, week out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I think we're still far. Like anything could happen, you know. Because let's be honest, if you if someone said how far is Aston Villa from getting in the top four last season, everyone would be like, they were far. Yeah. And yeah. no, you know what I mean? So anything could happen. I'm saying this. Next season it may not could do do something crazy. Even with Leicester, think about the season before. If we said how far is Leicester from ever winning the league, we'll be like, they ain't winning the league. No, they won the league. Hmm. No. So, Even so Newcastle, how much, being in how much do you put it down to, though? Do you, how much huh? do you put it down, the consistency thing you mentioned, how much is it down to 
But the, Eric you know Ten Hag what? versus but, but, but the like the is, squad you, and the players. You've got, you've, got, you've got to look at all the teams, yeah, that I mentioned that have done the unthinkable. So when Leicester won the league, when when Newcastle qualified for the Champions League, right? And even what well, Aston Villa, the one denominator is that they've got a good manager that's installed stability in their team and the way they play and everything. We don't have that at the moment. So with, with Leicester, they had Ranieri that came in, right? And had the key players, Vardy, Mares, and all that, right? Doing well. Then you look at Aston Villa, they've got Emery. He's come, made them start playing an attacking, high paced football. I don't right? care and about Emery. Look at Emery. New- <laughs> Tell him about and then, him. And, and, then, and then look at Newcastle, right? He he's coming in. He's got a way. He's got them playing a certain way that's effective. The problem is not going to be how far is. It's all down to the management going forward and that whether they can get the best out of the players. Because there's one thing not having the players, but you can get the best out of the players that you have. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's what all those other teams I mentioned done. Oh, no, you see, the- you see, you see what what he's saying too. Like to me, like for a manager to be successful, mm. the players need to buy into your ideas. Yeah. And the minute the players don't buy into your ideas, you know you're in trouble. Now, we often talk about managers building their team. When they're building their team, they're trying to find a guy that will buy into their ideas. The beta arm for sure, for example, when at 31st at 32, he has some guys there that will use to like challenge his authorities that will not buy into the, his ideas of what he do, that, that, that he do. He got rid of them. What we've seen at my United is that we are in our second season. And we're still quite not sure who is in the manager's plans and who is not. Because we don't really have like a style of play to kind of determine it. Last year, we used to have this argument that, oh, this player is not in the manager's plan. This player. Like this year, for example, last year, we will argue about McTominay. This year, McTominay is one of our top goal scorers. Mm. Are we going to sit here and say like, oh, McTominay is not part of the manager's plan? You, you know? So... It's very hard to kind of like know what direction we are going as a football club because the fans, we confuse about what it is that the manager is trying to do when what players fit his uh, plans and what players don't. But if you watch us yesterday, bro, you are looking like players who are confused. They don't they don't want to be on the pitch. They don't like the first goal, for example, it, it just tells you everything that you need to do, uh, you need to see. It was just disaster, man. Just Casemiro, disaster. bro. Casemiro this is what just happens when you put on midfield and send that back, bro. Johnny Evans will just saying, do whatever though. you're going to do. You see what you're saying, NK? Yeah, it's down to Ten Hag because it's like with the other managers, like you say, Arteta, right? When you had Lacazette and Bamiyan, oh. when they weren't really feeding and he got rid of them, right? Yep. He, he never at one point done what Ten Hag has done. Ten Hag has conclusively said, I can't, I can't, um, I can't use my style. So if you're saying that, if I'm a player and my manager saying he can't, I'm not playing your style then. If you don't believe I, the team could play, why feed into it? And why that's his try. problem. He shouldn't, he has to, he has to, even though it may be different, he needs to start feeding into them and then grudge. Because I'd rather us losing, but us losing in style. Because there's that one game we played, was it last I season? Thinking, you see, you see Edmund, what you're talking about too, yeah? I was even talking about, not even the style, I was talking about how, like, because last year, and you guys know me because I was here last year. I, I was one of the biggest uh, Tim Hag uh, supporters. I mean, I remember the beginning of the season when when I turned on him, fans were shocked when I did that, man. <laughs> because he was so, <laughs> he was shocked. He's like, okay, well, what, why have you done that too? But one thing I, I used to like about him last year too is that he used to say like, look, we cannot use anything as an excuse. Injuries or not, we cannot use any, every an excuse. We go there and we have to win the game. We deal with it. But then this year, you see him press conference after press conference using the injuries as a skills and i get it we do have injuries but to say the moment know. the moment you start to like use that if i'm a player i know that i got an excuse to hide behind because if we go there we don't play bad i know we can use the word injuries you know oh because because this, this player wasn't there i couldn't play well because this player, because that's what the manager is doing so you can see that they are echoing that the demand is not there even yesterday after he lost the game and then he chose it to be a time where he's going to talk about Arsenal not having Arsenal having just one injury or so like for the all of the season. I think it's like I get it, like we're not on their level. Don't pick a fight with these managers. He done the same thing too with uh, Liverpool right before we played them to say, oh, what do you call it? Uh, we could have beaten all the teams where they test stuff like that. Like sometimes you just need to know where you are and not pick up certain fights and. And, and, and to me, like I said to you, I don't know what's going to happen with him in, in his future. Personally, I would like him to be sacked. But something <laughs> tell me that this new ownership, 
don't know what to Bruv, do with him. But what is Arsenal's level though? Because for me, like when you look at Klopp, you see a guy that everyone lords. The Liverpool fans love him. You know, he's rated as what, top two manager, you know, whatever it is in the league or even in the world, they look at him like a G. Not in the top two, but they rate him as one of the Gs. What people are going to remember of Klopp, like only the people that watch him in the Premier League and know about him and saw the journey of the, you know, running City down to the last point are going to be like, okay, yeah, he was on stuff. Like he had them playing. People outside of that that don't really follow Liverpool like that, they're going to all focus on oh, this guy won one Champions League and one Premier League. How are you putting him in the same category as the greats of uh, of, of the Mourinho's, of the of the um, Peps, as the uh, Carlo Ancelotti's? You understand? And then I'm looking at Arteta now. Arteta's what? It's his fifth year now. Obviously, he's doing his thing. I know he had a lot of work to do, but so does Eric Ten Hag. He's had a lot of challenges himself, but put that to the side. This is his fifth year now. The last time you lot won a, a, a title was what the FA Cup, which was I don't know, 2017 maybe, or, oh, or no, 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 is it? Yeah, that was his first trophy that he won. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. twenty. Like, like that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. When he yeah. took over, he won that. Like, that was Emery's team. That was in his, really his team. It was yeah. Emery's team. That was Emery's team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He came in. He done a few months there. He won an FA Cup. Now it's his own team. He ain't won nothing. So he benefited off Emery's team. You understand? So I'm just like. What makes yeah, yeah? Let's so, let's chop that. Up. I feel like it's is 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 tough, isn't it? Because there's so many giants in the Premier League, isn't it? Like for him to build his own team, you have to not only build a team, you have to remember other teams are getting better as well. Yeah, like, that's true. So you got you got yeah. Man City, you got Liverpool, you got the other like not so much now Chelsea, but you know you've got certain teams. So you got I Newcastle think, coming up with good cores and West. Yeah, well, Aston even Aston Villa, Villa are looking good. good. Yeah, they have a good I team. Think Arsenal are not far away. Like I've seen bit by bit, they've been sorting out the issues. Defensively, they're good now. They've probably got one of the best defensive records. That was an issue for them, right? Mm-hmm. Midfield was probably an issue for them as well. They've got Rice in and he's he's adapted well, right? Yep. I think the next issue they're going to solve will be one of the last pieces. And I a think striker. we get a striker. As soon as they get a striker, they can get 20 plus goals. They still, they, but the thing is, even if they did that, they away. still won't talk with Chess to say, okay, we are winning the... Like really no, believe no, it. No, 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 we will. It's about like building a team, like, and I think bit by bit they're building a team here yeah, that can actually like achieve stuff. Do you get what I'm saying? But there's areas that but they say that Man United is miles away, miles away from doing what, not winning nothing for ten years. No, but not I'll winning you, nothing for five I'll, years. I'll, I'll tell like, you what though, like I don't we were care about none of that stuff. With the Leicester run, with uh, a City run, with a few of these other championships back in the day, Arsenal was always number two or number three, so we were always right there. We just never found a way to get over that hump. And our problem back then used to be we wouldn't spend the cash. We would never go out and spend those big, big deals, get the superstars to put us over the hill. Mm. Now, in this day and age of football, a lot of it is academy focused. It's a very, you know, you work with what you have. You identify who's going to be your superstars. And then you go and you add those foreign pieces around them to give that that team but then you also have those long-term guys that you can market and base the team around so with united i feel that you know you have some young stars in Garnacho. i i absolutely love kobe mino i feel like he's going to be a monster piece in your midfield moving forward um and right now it's just you guys are dealing with the friction of the older guys not buying in 100 percent then the younger guys are coming in. It's like they don't have any veterans to look up to to say, lead the way. And so until Casemiro, unfortunately, I believe he has to leave. Bruno's attitude has always been one kind for me. You know, one game he's hot and he's encouraging and he's and he's he's uplifting everybody. The next game, it's like he's telling everybody to... to You're making to these guys him. happy, boy. You're he's, making these guys happy. I, I, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's, there's, there's too much two-mindedness in the club. And that's the issue, like you said, Arteta. That was the first thing he knew he had to get rid of. Because me, Obama Yang's one of my favorite players, bar none. And seeing him leave the club in the way he did was it was painful for me. But then look, now he's gone over to Marseille and he's reclaimed form. Like he know he's always but he's one of like those characters where you have to let them do as they please and walk around and do stuff. But when you're trying to build a cohesive machine like Pep, like Klopp, you you can't have that. You can't have that at all, you know. And this is like, for instance, that bust up with Salah on the on the touchline. That was the first time I've seen yeah, that's crazy. a senior player like that directly 
go against Klopp in the closing minutes of a game. And I mean, maybe it's just with the the retirement coming up and stuff of that nature. Maybe that's why. But you it's know, it's happened Ma- before. Remember, Marnie done it as well too. Ah, uh, yeah, mm. that's right. But see, Mar- but see, Mar- Mar- went crazy on him. Yeah. And, and then and then he was out, and then they yeah. they shipped him off to Bayern. So, so what do you see? What similarities do you see between Arsenal then and your your rebuild and what you went through to where you are now? And Manchester United, where we're at now, because you guys changed your board. We're changing our board. You guys had veterans that you got rid of. We've got veterans here that we still probably need to get rid of. You had youngsters that you've integrated from your youth academy. We've got guys that were trying to integrate from our youth academy and youngsters that we've bought in Ganacho as well. So is there similarities? Because a lot of people don't even think there's similarities, you know. Do you know what the problem is? I feel like... With Arsenal, they never stop playing their football, win or lose. That's their. Yeah. They always had the same consistency. We don't have that. You know, one day we'll play some. Remember that Liverpool game when we were like, "Damn, is this the football we're going to play? We're going to be good." Then all mm. of a sudden, it's just, we've never seen football like that again. I guess so the I question is Arsenal, then: Do we stick with our manager? Then that goes. I know your answer is. You don't need to tell no, me. You know what? You know what it is. It, it's a difficult. Like I want to say no, but then it's hard when you look out. What's else? What else is out there right now? Like when I'm hearing Southgate, no, I don't want him in my team. No, Jesus, no. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> when you actually Tuchel, Tuchel's more like a short-term project. He's more like bring him in. He, like, but in the long run, Tuchel will clash with people. He yeah. always does. I, 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 I think, I think, I think the issue is, and, and to your question about Arsenal level, look, we gotta be honest. As much as we don't like Arsenal, <laughs> if it wasn't for if it, if it, if it wasn't for Pep, Arsenal would be celebrating their second Premiership this season. Of course, yeah. You Slack know, up, and, and it's like what what they find is like it's like the winger uh, winger Ferguson time where Ferguson was so great that winger could not win a lot of mm-hmm. premierships. Thank you. You know, mm-hmm. and for 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 now because this season we were talking about City not even being at their best, and they are about to still get potentially ninety points or so to win a league title when we're talking about not being at their best. So to me, in order for you to literally look. If you are any club right now where your team is doing well, challenging for the title, your prayer should be one was for club to leave, but he wasn't even a, a problem anyway because he only got one title. Mm. Right for Pep to leave it's Pep. Un- un- yeah. until until Pep leave, I feel like <laughs> second place is gonna be the new first place. <laughs> you know, so you can talk about oh we need a striker, we need that. It come down to that mental side of things, and they 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 got one of the best manager. They have experience of like doing it. See, like what they doing with Arsenal, what well, they've done it with Liverpool before, and that's what they're gonna be kneeling on. You know, come there. The, the minute they literally, the minute they started to kind of like win games, and they just say, "Oh, we were gonna catch Arsenal," but they've been there before. They've done it before. So it's this like their bread and butter. But that's what it is. With, I don't even. With, I, I'm confused, bro. Like I said, but I just can't take Arsenal winning this league, bro. But let yeah. me tell you, are and, you, are and, you on, okay? on, and on our, our, our manager thing, to me, I feel like there's two difference uh, when it comes to their situation and our situation. And the biggest one is that with our Tete, that ownership brought him there. You know, them crunky guys, they brought him there. They had faith in him. Like, I think our Tete too was in a similar position where Tim Hag was in right now. And what the Arsenal board did was that they gave him a new contract before the season even finished. And I remember at the time, he hasn't been made top four yet, and then they gave him the contract. And they didn't care about the outside noise. With Tim Hag, there's a whole new uh, co-owner that's in charge of football structure. So that's not their guy. He don't share the mm, same vision true. as them, you know? So because of that, to me, because working relationship is very is is is, is, is hard. Mm-hmm. If they don't believe in the vision of the manager and his vice versa too, it's very hard for them to kind of like work together. I think in their best interest, I think they need to go find someone that they can kind of like work together as a team. You know, yeah. on a recruitment point of view and on decision making point of view. But I feel like they don't have a I feel like they don't have a guy in place just yet. And they would have loved to kind of like keep this manager for one more year to kind of like see what he can do. And if not, they would probably would have put in their football structure in place for that. But it's a mess today. They've come into, and I feel like as a stand now, it's a mess right now because we don't know about. You cannot tell me that 
an FA Cup game should determine a manager's future. No I way. feel like they should have known by now what they're doing with the manager already. And the fact okay. that they don't know or do know, I don't know. I hope they do know. But in terms of like planning-wise, it's not looking good, man. It is not looking good. But to me, anyways, I don't feel like we mouse off Arsenal. We will mouth off because they're not winning nothing for us to be mouse off anyway. You got to be <laughs> winning something for someone to be mouse off it. Well, we won the trophy you. last season. They didn't win a trophy. As it stands now, they have been won no trophy. We can finish the season. We will, but we're gonna have more trophies than them. So the Carabao Tin Cup, like us. FA Cup, bro. Ten. FA Cup final, bro. Uh, FA Cup uh, final. Uh, <laughs> against who? FA Cup against who? See, zero trophies. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. I'll I'll tell you. I'll wrap tell us you up, Ugo. Wrap us up. Wrap us up. I'll, I'll tell you where I think the difference is with Van and Arsenal, right? Is when Arteta joined the club, he was 37 years of age, been a uh, assistant coach so far his whole career. His only ties to the club was just being a former player, right? Now, Ten Hag was coming from enjoying success in the Netherlands, cl- uh, manager of the top uh, manager of the top club over there, and everything like that. He had his own style, he had his own ideologies, and he came to Manchester trying to supplant that in the club but he was also 53 when he took over and you know as you get older you get more stuck in your ways you get more rigid with your philosophies and stuff like that so i feel like our tip having a young manager coming into a young club allowed our the kind of flexibility of understanding his players and saying these are the steps i need to mold these guys to mold this 11 into the type of team i want I feel like Ten Hag isn't really giving like the I I see the way he play. He gives minutes out. And it's like, if you know somebody's not putting in a shift, why are they getting in match after match after match after match after match? Why not experiment? Why not let the young guys run? Why not let, you know, it's 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 certain things that just old managers can you tell him this when you're in LA? When you're in LA, could you could you go to Eric Ten Hag and ask him why Rashford is still playing? I'll, I'll, I'll try, but <laughs> ben, look, trash. Let, 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 we, we can end on this note, though. We can end on this note. Mm. I've been known on Twitter as the jinx, yeah. So <laughs> I would like to right now congratulate Arsenal for winning the Premiership, <laughs> for being the champions. Oh Lord, no, not, uh, not until, I not until so I've been known as one of the biggest jinx. So I, I'm congratulations, Arsenal. <laughs> For being champions. So look. In the blood of Jesus, it will not work. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. I, 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 hope, I hope we do this again for preseason. I really hope so. And this time, I hope you bring a, a bigger clock. Because <laughs> if you have if you don't have a trophy to show for it, uh, no. time, time, time is gonna be moving clock, for you real clock, slow up in Clock here. now, clock now. This will be a cup the next time oh, I come out. Yeah, this will be a miniature cup. Oh. Hey, you know what? I'm a, we're gonna clip this. And first, <laughs> We have to. We're going to play this as an intro- introduction the next oh, time. We, we have to, with the season, specialist but... lyrics, bro. We, we're going we're gonna to be here. We're we, we waiting and see here. Then. We're waiting and see. We bro. are. We are. Look, we've better just hope got we don't win it. the FA Cup and you bottle it. Better hope because I will deliver <laughs> no. that FA Cup like it's a Champions League. <laughs> uh, forget that one. Look, guys, we're signing out. We're signing out. It was a good episode, man. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to hear more videos like this. Tune in, man. OT99. Follow these man on socials. Whoever is on socials, follow them. Look them up, man. I'll put their info in the chat if they want it. Some of them don't want you to follow them, man. They don't want you in their business. Yeah, they can't look, follow me, why, why, why wouldn't you want to follow champions? If follow, you, follow no, no, no. If, it is, if, uh, you, if, if end, you if you in love, the if you're in love with Tim Hag, if you're in love with Tim Hag, if you're in love with Bruno, don't follow me, man. Because <laughs> I can't do about 24 <laughs> 7. Bro, peace. Oh. Peace. Love. Oh.